This is Ask Sarah, where you send me a design question and I give you an answer. Today we have a question from Alice, who's writing from Larnaca, Cyprus. That's a long way away. Alice writes, Dear Sarah, how do you decide on the balance and location of colors when painting a piece of furniture in two different colors? For example, I want to paint a red and brown small console or buffet. Should the top and legs be red, just the body red, or does it matter? Thanks for taking time to do this. Okay, well I'm happy to help. I think when you're looking at using red, it's a really bold color. So I would suggest that you either paint the entire piece red so it can make a statement. If you think about some of the beautiful pieces that come from China that are painted in that fantastic rich red lacquer finish, they really stand out and the piece of furniture becomes almost like a piece of art in the room. What I would encourage you to think about is, is this a piece that will look good when painted in a bold color? Does it have something interesting and sculptural about the shapeliness of the piece of furniture? Or are you just trying to make it a bit more jazzy and fun? If you're thinking about just making it jazzy and fun, why not go all out and paint the entire piece red? Or, if you're talking about a red and brown combo, I think it would look nicest if the brown that you're speaking of is just the natural wood tone. In which case, I think it would be beautiful to treat just the top of the table to be red. And that way, it will look like a tray. And anything that you set on top of the table, if you think about putting a tray or a bowl or a framed piece of art, Whatever you set on top of that red surface will come to life and it will be dazzling and bright and beautifully framed. So I hope your painting project works and have fun with it. Most important, if you're painting a piece of furniture, make sure that you use a durable paint finish. So I would suggest something that has a bit of gloss to it and that way it will be more durable. Now, we also have a bonus question here, and I have to answer this question. This comes from a bit closer to home. This question is sent in by Mark, who's writing from Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, who says, Dear Sarah, why do a lot of designers feel it necessary to karate chop throw pillows, leaving that indentation on the top of the pillow? Okay, Mark, clearly this is something that's been bugging you for a while. I would say that you don't necessarily need to karate chop the pillow to give it that little indentation. However, that indentation is normally found when the insert of a pillow, the stuffing in a pillow is actually made of down or feathers. So it's much softer. You really can't karate chop a pillow that is full of polyester stuffing. So this is a way of showing softness and trying to make it look a bit more inviting. If the pillows are over chopped, I think they look stiff and they look too fussy. However, I like my pillows to be soft and fluffed and inviting so that I just want to flop down on that sofa or chair after a long day. So there you are. I hope I've solved the mystery of the karate chop pillow.